Welcome back to the virtual FCS tutorial series. This is tutorial 1.2. And uh, in this video, we will look at setting up a model to simulate the cycling of a lithium ion battery cell. Okay, so we're here in the Open Modelica connection editor, and we have loaded in the virtual FCS library as was shown in the previous video. And uh, now we're ready to start doing some basic uh, simulation activities. So let's come over to the Virtual FCS library in our library's browser and just click on the little plus sign to expand it out. And uh, a good place to start here is the examples category. So here we can see that uh, some examples have been prepared to demonstrate the basic functionality of uh, Virtual FCS. And uh, let's just start at the top and go through uh, some of these examples. So the uh, first model that we prepare, we've prepared here is uh, called Cycle Battery Cell. And this is a model just to uh, cycle a single uh, lithium ion battery cell. And uh, we can see here that this uh, model contains some different components. And let's just have a quick look through what some of these are. So starting here at uh, lithium ion cell, we can select that and then just double click on it. And this will tell us a little bit more about uh, what, this, uh, what this model is. So here we can see that this is a 2RC equivalent circuit model of a lithium ion battery cell. And if you're not familiar with battery modeling or electrochemical modeling, uh, the equivalent circuit model is a kind of standard for modeling electrochemical devices where we want something that, that describes their behavior but isn't necessarily as computationally expensive as some multi-physics models like continuum models. So in this application where we're interested on uh, system level behavior, uh, equivalent circuit modeling is a, is a good approach to take. So here we can see that we can define some uh, parameters for the cells. Uh, the default values that have been set uh, in the class uh, as it is uh, describe a lithium iron phosphate uh, graphite cell in an 18650 cylindrical uh, cell format. In future releases of virtual FCS, we will include a, a library of different chemistries and different cell formats. Uh, but for now, for the first release, uh, this is a 18650 LFP graphite cell. So uh, we can define some values for our uh, parameters here. Uh, in this case, the only one we're going to change is the initial state of charge. Uh, to start it at 1% uh, state of charge, so fully discharged. Okay, and we can see that the uh, battery cell is connected to a battery management system. And uh, this has the, the role of uh, both tracking what the state of charge of the battery is and limiting the voltage of the battery. In lithium ion cells, it's important that the voltage doesn't exceed certain limits or fall below certain limits. Uh, so this helps us keep it within, within a predefined range that we want. Okay, and uh, on the other side of the battery management system, we have a pulse current source, uh, which is set up to apply a, a current pulse to uh, charge the battery at a 1C rate for one hour, and then discharge the battery also at a 1C rate for one hour. Okay, so uh, this, uh, these components describe the uh, electrical and electrochemical performance of the uh, lithium ion system. And of course, we also know that uh, heat uh, management is important in lithium ion cells. So down here at the bottom, we have uh, coupled this to a thermal model. Uh, if we have a look at the lithium ion cell block, we see this, this uh, red uh, block. And uh, in Modelica, red blocks uh, indicate heat ports. So we see that the heat port of the lithium ion cell is connected to a model for uh, body radiation and convection. So this would simulate, for example, um, flow of air across the surface to uh, cool the lithium ion cell and uh, radiation exchange between the, the cell and its surroundings. Uh, and if we just follow the, uh, the lines here, we can see that these uh, thermal models are connected to a fixed temperature boundary condition, uh, which is set to 298 Kelvin or um, 25 degrees Celsius. 
Okay, so those are the, uh, the basic aspects uh, of this model, and uh, we can uh, now start to set up the simulation. Uh, the first thing that we want to do when uh, modeling um, uh, or setting up models in OpenModelka is to perform a model check. So this is just to make sure that uh, we've defined everything properly and haven't forgotten to connect something or haven't forgotten to state some equation. So to do that, we can come up here to the uh, to our toolbar, and there's this green circle with a white check mark in it. And when I hover my my cursor over it, uh, it, it brings up the the phrase check model. Uh, so let's just click on that, and we can see that uh, here we have uh, 210 equations and 210 variables. Uh, so everything is is basically um, well defined. So that's okay. Uh, now we can set up the properties for our simulation. So we'll come over here to this uh, square, white square with a green S uh, inside, and click on that. And this is where we can set up the parameters for our simulation. So things like stop time, how long do we want to simulate it, and uh, what kind of time steps we want to set. So in this case, uh, I've asked it to solve for 7,200 seconds, or two hours. Uh, at a time step of one second. And if we're happy with everything else here, uh, then we can just click on OK, and that will start the, um, the solver process. OK, so our uh, simulation has completed, and uh, I've moved from the modeling tab over to the plotting tab, and we can have a look at uh, some of the results. So uh, over here in the, um, in the variables browser, uh, here we see that we have some, some names for things. So we have BMS, uh, body radiation, convection, uh, lithium ion cell, uh, and so on. And what we'll recognize is that uh, each of these names corresponds to a block uh, in the model. So if we're interested in, in knowing how any one of these blocks uh, behaves during the simulation, then all we have to do is uh, come over to the variables browser and we can select the component that we're interested in. And of course, uh, the one we're most interested in is the lithium ion uh, cell. So we can select that one and click the little plus sign to expand it. And when we do that, we see a lot of different things. And this is basically showing uh, all of the, the different uh, variables that are uh, present in the in the uh, in that class. So a lot of this is is things that we're not necessarily uh, interested in, but it's it's helpful to have, especially uh, if uh, we're doing our own model development or troubleshooting. It's always helpful to to be able to look into the details of some of these uh, of values. Uh, but for now, what we're really interested in is voltage. We can come down here to uh, pin P and pin N, which uh, represent the positive pin and the negative pin, respectively, and click on pin P to expand it. And there we can click on the V value for voltage. And uh, here in our window, uh, we can see the, uh, the evolution of the voltage of the cell uh, during the simulation. So at the beginning, at uh, time zero, we're at state of charge uh, 0.01, 1%. And uh, as the battery is charged, the voltage uh, steadily increases until we reach our uh, cutoff voltage, which in this case has been set at uh, 3.6 volts. And we can see that the, um, the voltage kind of plateaus at that level. Um, but this is kind of small, so let's try to make it a little bit bigger. We can actually just take our cursor and make a box around it to blow it up. And there we go. Now we can see that, that uh, voltage hold behavior a little bit more, more clear. Okay, if we want to go back to our original view, we can say fit in view and uh, it zooms us back out. And we can see that after, uh, after one hour of charging, the model enters a one hour of discharging uh, phase and the uh, cell voltage uh, steadily drops until it reaches our lower cutoff limit of uh, two volts there. 
and if we zoom in right at the end there, you can see the, the voltage uh, falling to, to 2 volts. And then right at the end, it uh, looks like it's starting to, to go through the next uh, charging cycle. Okay, so we can display this uh, versus time. We can also display it as a parametric uh, plot versus state of charge. And to do that, we can come up to our uh, toolbar here and click on this little um, uh, swirly icon. And uh, we'll just click on that. And this gives us the option of, of creating a parametric plot. So if we want to plot the voltage on the y-axis versus the state of charge on the x-axis, uh, we first need to define our, um, our state of charge values. So this is stored in the charge counter, um, in the charge counter uh, menu there, and we can just click on SOC, and then find our uh, positive pin and click on the voltage V, and there we go. Now instead of plotting this uh, this behavior versus time, we can see uh, on the x-axis we have the um, the state of charge of the cell. And this is helpful for comparing with, um, with uh, either spec sheets or, or, or curves from lit literature uh, that are often displayed in this way. Okay, so uh, we can see the uh, electrical behavior of the cell. Uh, before we, we close this example, let's also have a look into the thermal uh, performance and the temperature development. So I'm going to start a, uh, a new uh, plot in time. So I'll come up here to, the, uh, to our toolbar and just click on this uh, kind of cross with a, a red line and a green line, and that will create a, a new plot window for us. And in the uh, lithium ion cell uh, variable browser here, I'll just find uh, the heat port and click on the little plus sign to expand it. And there we can see the value for T uh, temperature. So I will just click on that. And uh, yeah, so here we can see that the battery started out at uh, 20 degrees uh, Celsius. And uh, the temperature rose pretty quickly to a steady state value of about 26.3 uh, degrees Celsius and, and held that. Um, and uh, when the uh, battery uh, went into constant voltage uh, mode where the, the current is less. There was a slight dip in the temperature, which then recovered back when, uh, when we started discharging the, uh, the battery. So uh, I hope that provides a, um, a quick view into uh, how to, to set up uh, models and how to run them and how to do some basic uh, post-processing of the results. Uh, in the uh, next video, we will look at how to do a similar activity for uh, the fuel cell stack.